Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to our English news edition coming to you from Canal Algérie. I'm your host, Mesa Dumas, to the headlines. The President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Taboun, receives on Sunday the Croatian Foreign and European Affairs Minister, who is on a two day visit in Algiers. Algerians celebrate the victory of our national football team in the capital Algiers and throughout the national territory. This is the first time in Algeria the government meeting relocated this Sunday to Khanshla province. The President of the Republic promised it on Sunday and it's done. 113 billion dinars have been allocated from the development program of this province. And Algeria will officially organize the 19th edition of the Mediterranean Games. The second vice president of the International Commi Committee of the Mediterranean Games, Bernard Amsalam, confirmed it this Sunday in Oran. The President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Taboun, received on Sunday the Croatian Foreign and European Affairs Minister, Gordon Gerlich Radman, who is, who is currently in Algiers for a two-day visit. The audience took place at the headquarters of the Presidency of the Republic in the presence of the Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad Minister, Ramtan Lamamra, and the Presidency's Cabinet Director, Abdel Aziz Khalaf. The meeting was an opportunity to examine ways and means of strengthening bilateral cooperation in all areas, particularly economic and commercial, as well as issues of common interest. An intense match both on the physical and psychological levels against Morocco on Saturday, ending with an Algerian victory. Walking us back through the events of the match is Leticia Sadqawi. With penalty kicks ending 5-3 to three for our national team after both original halves ended in a draw 2-2, two to two, Morocco bid farewell to the Arab tournament. An intense match both physically and psychologically, our national team has displayed a heroic performance. Yassim Brahimi scored the first goal with a penalty after a foul was committed on Youssef Blayli. Morocco managed to come back in the score a minute later. The maestro Belayli scored a magnificent goal in the additional halves of which Morocco managed to equalize. For the match to be determined through penalty kicks, the Algeria has won. To face later on in the semi-finals, the national team of Qatar. The Palestinian flag was present in the celebrations, proving again the strong relationship between the two countries. Let's listen to the declarations of our players following this meeting. عوامل يلعبوا كيف كيف معناتها عندهم لي زوتوماتيزم بيناتهم الحمد لله إرادة اللاعبين والحرارة الجريمة اللي عندهم صنعت الفرق اليوم حتى الدقيقة 120 كما تعرف تعب كبير وجهد كبير قدمناه في المقابلة اللي فاتت وخاصة المقابلة على النصر اللي ما كانتش مقابلة سهلة الدربي الحمد لله مازال عندنا مازال المشوار إن شاء الله كان دي طونفور ودي طونفير الحمد لله ربي يفرج لهم سي ليسونسيال اللي فرحنا الشعب تاعنا بون درك حنا راح كيما نقولوا نبريباريو لو بيان نبريباريو ومن بعد نشوف لا غدوة نشوفوا نقاط الضعف ونقاط القوة تاع خاطر إن شاء الله وين نكونوا في النهار عشنا ضغط كبير وانك تعرف دربي مغاربي الحمد لله كنا ثاني واجدين وين كملنا الماتش بالفوز نادوا هذا الشعب قاعد في هذا الشعب اللي كان هنا والشعب الدور مادرين كونفونس في بعضنا وفي الستار تاعنا وين صبرنا الحمد لله وين كملنا كلمه اللي تقول الشعب كامل يستنى فيها الشعب العربي كامل يستنى فيها نقول الحمد لله وين طري 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 فيها البوش قدمنا اليوم كيما شفتوا كيما قلت انت الماتش صعيب كان بزاف 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 الحمد لله يا ربي قدرنا نفوزوا ومازال الخير القدام Algerians throughout the national territory celebrated the victory of our national team. Supporters who came in great numbers showed a great lesson in solidarity. Let's take a look at these images that came to us from the four corners of the country. <laughs> انت 
الانتصار تاع اليوم فرحنا بزاف وكانت في قلبنا مبروك علينا مبروك علينا درنا كرو ماتش يعطيهم الصحه لي جوار يعطيهم الصحه لي سيبورتو لي كانوا تما ويحيى الشعب الجزائري وان تو تري فيفا لالجيري يعطيكم الصحه اون في لالجيري في لالجيري فلسطين الشهداء يا خويا ماتش اليوم واش نقول لك هاي القاع وفرحونا غادي غير بهذه الحراره ان شاء الله غادي نوصلوا لا فينال ونلقوها كيما دينا كوب دافريك نقول لهم سوا في الا سوا في البي سوا في السي ديما نربحوكم عشنا المقابله ككل جزائري على الاعصاب ولكن في الاخير محاربي الصحراء فرحونا وبالانجاز هذا يعني الشعب الجزائري كله صغار وكبير خرجوا يفرحوا وفرحنا بالبيت تاع بالليلي وان شاء الله الكاس تكون من نصيب الجزائر الحمد لله كانت مقابله صعبه شويه وبسي وشويه كانوا رجاله في الميدان ونشكروا بلايلي ونشكروا زملاء بلايلي اللي فرحونا والعقوبه الكاس ان شاء الله نجيبوها ويجيو الحمد لله حنا ربحنا وكثر خير يعني بلايلي ومبولحي وش راح نقول لك كونتو جيني فوالا جيري ان شاء الله على بالك على حبي حبي حبينا نوصلوا لا فينال باسكو لو سال بلاد اللي نقدروا نهزوا عليها انت فلسطين في لا الحمد لله يا ربي ربحنا المنتخب المغربي وهذا التاهل نهديه لفلسطين شهداء 1 2 3 في فلاشيري نودي الفوز هذا لخاوتنا كامل العرب اللي فرحوا معنا وخاصه التوانسه اللي كانوا حاضرين بقوه اللي شفناهم في السطاد نشكر كل الفريق الوطني اللي فرحنا وشرفنا في هذه المباراه فرحه هستيريه جد هستيريه بالفوز على المنتخب المغربي ونتمنى ان شاء الله الفوز بكاس العرب الى والفرحه الكامل الى الجزائري <تصفيق> The same atmosphere was prevailed in Toulouse in France after the qualification of our national football team for the semi-final of the FIFA Arab Cup 2021 against Morocco. <laughs> And in Gaza, Palestine, the Palestinians celebrated the victory of the Algerian national football team against Morocco after their qualification for the semi-finals of the FIFA Arab Cup 2021. <laughs> كل مبسوط جدا بهذه الفرحة هذولا من غزة بنقول لبلد المليون شهيد ألف تريليون مبروك ألف تريليون مبروك ولكم من غزة كل الاحترام والتقدير أنتم ليس صعب الجزائر أنتم شعب فلسطين نعشقكم بدمنا وبروحنا وبكل شيء كل التحية للجزائر
Sahrawi people expressed their happiness for their part as well after Algeria's victory against Morocco, taking the risk of being beaten up by the Mahzen occupation forces. More details with Melissa Kabash. <laughs> This video, which was taken in the Western Saharan territories just a few seconds after the final whistle, sealing the victory of Algeria against Morocco for the quarterfinals of the Arab Cup in Qatar, shows the joyful atmosphere prevailing in the Sahrawi territories, namely in the occupied Layoun. <laughs> The Algerian and Sahrawi flags were proudly waved one beside the other by the Sahrawi people on a festive atmosphere. Streets were packed with men, women and children celebrating the victory of the Algerian national team while chanting 1-2-3, Viva l'Algérie. It was unfortunately short-lived in the occupied towns of Layoun and Samara as well as Bujdar, which were savagely attacked by the Mahzen's occupying forces. More details with Manal Ammari. <laughs> The Sahrawi people witnessed their joy get quickly suppressed by the Mahzen occupation forces. In Smara, these forces prevented demonstrations of joy for Algeria's victory. These Sahrawi women learned much to their horror that a simple demonstration of joy towards the Algerian national team may result in them getting attacked and abused. <laughs> On another video, two vans belonging to the Mahzan occupation forces operated a raid against two young Sahrawis in occupied Al Ayoun, who were picked up by force for participating in the aftermatch protests. <laughs> Dozens of Sahrawi demonstrators, football supporters and passers-by were injured for peacefully expressing their joy. December 12, 2021 marks two years since the election of Abdel Majid Taboon as the President of the Republic, who provided during this period guidance, gave instructions and assessed follow-ups throughout the various governmental activities. More details with Manal Maafa. Several files were processed and dealt with all year long, and firm wills were put in place in order to go forward at a steady pace. Wills that converged around a one single objective, that of laying the foundations for a state of law. <laughs> The most outstanding evidence is without doubt the regularity of the government's council, which constitutes the main axis of the organization and regulation of the various questions under the presidency of the President of the Republic and under his vigilant eye in order to guide the executive in balanced and open context on all proposals. 
The course was taken forward in order to achieve change and fill the gaps identified in a lot of inherited problems. It was imperative to move towards governmental reshuffles according to the new constitution and according to the requirements that led to the appointment of a new chief executive. The holding of the meeting of the High Security Council not only testifies to the degree of awareness reached in the fight against the pandemic, but also for it being a tool to monitor the developments of the security situation in general, in addition to the social, political developments in the country. When it was necessary, the council was held exceptionally to reach clear sovereign decisions that straightened up the course and policies, decisions that aim to concretize the 54 commitments that had as main objective moving towards change. The President of the Republic reiterated his willingness to remove the corrupt people who have occupied their positions for decades and became eventually an impediment to the desired development. <laughs> The President of the Republic has repeatedly pledged to protect the goodwill and the executives of the Republic, confirming his willingness to implement the decisions of the various meetings he held, such as the independence of justice and equality between citizens before the law, and that by establishing a legal arsenal. Algeria has also opened the door to effective partnerships and acts with a leading and strong position with the other countries and remains in all situations standing in the face of all crises. The government held a meeting on Sunday in the province of Khinshla, a one-of-a-kind meeting which was held outside the government's palace. As promised by the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Taboon, 113 billion dinars have been allocated for the additional development program of Khinshla province. The details with Melissa Kabash. A financial envelope of more than 113 billion dinars will be intended for the implementation of the complementary development program for the benefit of Khrushla province, which will make it possible to achieve a global recovery in all sectors. The approach is now global. The public investment will be oriented towards activities that create job opportunities and wealth in this province, which has several areas and sectors likely to allow it to move towards a real global development in all areas. It is an agricultural as well as a tourist pool per excellence, which has not been exploited as it should. After this meeting, we will begin the realization of its projects, which will allow its sectors to move forward to achieve development. As for public investments, banks and financial institutions are called upon to support and finance investors and economic operators in this province. Regarding the transport sector, it was decided to program the construction of a 50-kilometer railway line, as well as a road network. In application of the instructions of the President of the Republic and respect of the new approach towards a local, equitable and sustainable development, the government met on December 12, 2021 at the level of Khinshla province, a historical province which benefits from a complementary development program that will affect all sectors and will allow this province to relaunch itself, particularly in the transport sector, with the programming of a 50 kilometers railway line as well as the development of the road network in which a financial envelope has been rented without forgetting other sectors such as health, tourism and culture sectors that will allow the province's development. Kamal Bulju, through his part, presented a report on the financing of development programs at the local level during the last few years. In terms of communal development programs, the province benefited from a global financial envelope of 7.2 billion dinars, which made it possible to record 616 local operations, while the province's solidarity fund and guarantee of local communities benefited from a financial envelope of 25 billion dinars, which made it possible to finance 79 operations. In another context, the interest given to the development of remote areas constitutes the main axis of the program decided by the President of the Republic so as to meet the inhabitants' needs. 
As for the water resources sector, it has been decided to build several wastewater treatment stations in Sharshar and Babar municipalities, in addition to a renewal and extension of drinking water supply networks across the province and the realization of a dam. Regarding the industrial sector, several zones and micro zones of activities through the several communes of Khanshla province will be realized. Numerous projects are also planned for the agriculture and forestry sectors, such as agricultural electrification the realization of agricultural tracks and the generalization of electrification from solar energy. For the energy sector, the connection in natural gas was the main subject. The trade sector for its part will agree on a study, realization and equipment of the Apple wholesale market. Finally, the housing sector is projecting to accord 700 rural housing grants and the registration of 300 social housing units. Prime Minister, Minister of Finance Ayman bin Abdurrahman held a meeting with Khanshla civil society representatives to discuss the overall upgrades and projects of different sectors in the province. Letitia Sadqawi. Through the meeting with civil society representatives, the Prime Minister, Minister of Finance, saluted and praised the prominent role of Khanshla's glorious history and its heroes in the National Liberation War. جاء اجتماع الحكومة كما كان مقررا خارج العاصمة لأول مرة على مستوى هذه الولاية المجاهدة هذه الولاية المجيدة ولاية عباس الغرور رحمه الله تعالى ولاية الشهداء ولاية المجاهدين Ayman bin Abdurrahman listened to the citizens' concerns, calling on them to fully contribute to the local development of their province. من ناحية الهيكل لكن السيد الوزير الأول من ناحية الأطباء والأخصائيين وكذا نعتبره هيكل بدون روح سيد بودخان روح ما هدر عليه سيد بودخان هذا ماذا بنا يرفع عليه الجميد روح مبرمج وواحد ما هدر عليه سيد بودخان هذا سيد مع الوزير الأول لو كان يرفع عليه الجميد بإذن الله أنا نوعدك بإذن الله بإذن الله راح يغطي الشرق كامل بزيارة تاعكم اليوم المواطن الخنشلي يتطلع أنه يكون مستقبل ولايته أحسن من ماضيها وأحسن من حاضرها وهو الشيء اللي وعد به السيد رئيس الجمهورية مرات عديدة At the end of the government meeting, the Prime Minister and Minister of Finance stressed that this meeting was devoted to the recovery and improvements affecting 15 different sectors, of which medical, agricultural, economic and industrial are part of, in addition to new projects underway such as the Cancer Hospital. إنجاز سد على مستوى واد الأزرق بسعة 35 مليون متر مكعب إنجاز وتجهيز وكهرباء 4000 متر خطي لأبار عبر الولاية بالنسبة لقطاع الصناعة دراسة وإنجاز منطقة نشاط في بغاي دراسة وإعادة تأهيل وإنجاز أربع مناطق نشاط في بلديات المحمل عين طويلة متوسى وشاشار فإضافة إلى كل المشاريع التي هي قيد إنجاز خاصة مستشفى مكافحة السرطان فهناك دراسة لإنجاز عيادة متعددة الخدمات في بلقيطان اقتناء جهاز يرام لمستشفى قيس وأخيرا رفع التجميد عن عملية تهيئة تسعة مساحات زراعية جديدة بجنوب ولاية خنشلة تقدم ب 18 ألف هكتار a fruitful meeting that allowed the civil society representatives to honor the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun, for the attention and the work done in this province. Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Ayman bin Abdurrahman will proceed on Monday to the inauguration of the 29th edition of the Algerian Production Fair, which will take place from the 13th to the 25th of December 2021. The Prime Minister will be accompanied in particular by members of the government, senior officials from the economic sector and representatives of the diplomatic corps accredited to Algiers.
The 45th edition of the Conference on Support and Solidarity for the Sahrawi People was organized in a particular context marked by the resumption of the armed conflict between the Polisario Front and Morocco since November 2020. More details with Manal Maafa. They were more than 200 people from 20 countries representing governments, parliamentary institutions, associations, as well as support committees for the Sahrawi people in the presence of a large Sahrawi delegation to take part in this 45th conference on support and solidarity for the Sahrawi people. This conference took place in tense circumstances. We believe that this conference successfully reached its objectives, noting the participants, in addition to the workshops and by the decisions taken. The final resolution adopted even reiterated the unwavering support to the Sahrawi people during this important stage of their struggle. The international solidarity movement with the Sahrawi people and the UKOKO called on the United Nations and the Mahzis allies to comply with the UN resolutions and international law to end the war waged by Morocco in Western Sahara. The conference was also an opportunity to highlight the atrocities committed by the occupation forces against Sahrawi civilians. It is true that we may have limited resources, but our belief in our just cause is stronger than anything else, and we have a firm will and determination to reach our goals and eventually exercise our right to self-determination. The closing of this 45th Conference on Support and Solidarity for Western Sahara, organized in Las Palmas, also coincided with Algeria's heroic victory against Morocco in a football match in the quarter-finals of the FIFA Arab Cup of 2021. The Vice President of the International Committee of Mediterranean Games, Bernard M. Salem, confirmed on Sunday that the 19th edition of the Mediterranean Games will take place next summer in Oran province, Manal Ammari. Oran province has undoubtedly won over the top officials of the International Mediterranean Games Committee. The 19th edition of these games will take place in 194 days. Bernard M. Salem has confirmed that this province has all the important assets needed to hold a spectacular edition. We owe the rapid development witnessed over the last few weeks with the intervention of the President of the Republic. All his decisions have enabled us to accelerate the process of the evolution of the Games organization. After two days of maintenance and visits of accommodation facilities and sports infrastructures, the approval was given to welcome delegations and host sports competitions in the best conditions. During these two days, we brought together representatives, heads of missions of the Mediterranean Olympic Committee and technical delegates of international federations. The Games Organizing Committee presented the state of affairs in all fields and indicated the preparation for the upcoming reception of the teams of each country's delegations. We are now on the next stages in order to provide the best organization for the success of the Games and for the Iran Games to be included in the history of the Mediterranean Games. Concerning the water complex, we started installing the equipment and the outdoor swimming pool for competitions. This achievement will be completed by the end of January. The multi-sports hall is also nearly completed. We intend to hand it over with all the necessary equipment in mid-January. Once again, and before we wrap up this edition, congratulations to our national football team for this great victory against Morocco in the FIFA Arab Cup. We invite you to enjoy these images of thousands of Algerians who took to the streets to express their joy and happiness. <laughs>